Hello and good evening to all of you. I hope all of you are doing well and all of you are in good health. In today's class, we will learn about some of the necessary conditions that needs to be prevented in order to prevent system from entering into a state of deadlock. So there are certain necessary conditions which if prevented the system may not enter into a state of deadlock. Now let us try and understand these conditions. So si systems with only simultaneously shared resources cannot deadlock. Right? This implies we need to negate mutual exclusion. So we have learned in the previous class that one of the primary condition for deadlock to happen in a system is mutual exclusion. That means there has to be a resource that is utilized in a non-shareable mode which implies that if a process is allocated the resource no other process can be allocated that particular resource so that is that is what mutual exclusion was all about so here we are trying to negate mutual exclusion so a system with only simultaneously shared resources cannot deadlock the second one is the system should abort all the processes which requests for a resource that is being used right okay so system should all about all the processes that is requesting for a resource that is being used by some other process so we need to negate hold and wait so in the first condition we need to negate mutual exclusion in the second condition we need to negate hold and wait wherein system aborts all the processes that requests for a resource that is being utilized by some other process third one preemptions preemptions may be possible if a process does not use its resources until it has acquired all its needs so here we have one of the assumptions that we have made is that until and unless a process does not acquire all the resources that it needs in order to perform operation it does not initiate its operation right okay so that is one of the assumptions that is made so a process will not initiate its execution until unless it acquires all the processes all the resources that it requires in order to perform operation so in situation when a process is holding a resource that is not being utilized so preemption should be possible to preempt the resource or to, to preempt the utilization of the resource by the process so what we need to do is we need to negate no preemption right okay so this was the third condition we had specified for deadlock so in order to prevent system entering into deadlock we need to negate no preemption the fourth one is to negate irreversible processes so transaction processing system provide checkpoints to that processes may back out of uh, the transaction right again okay? so here what we do is we provide a stable state to which a process may return to if uh, a process terminate terminates its ongoing transaction so transaction processing system provides a checkpoint so that process may back out of transaction so this is to negate irreversible processes now the fifth one systems that prevent detect or avoid cycles that is negate circular weight that is often the, the preferred solution so we need to have a system that prevents detects or avoids cycles that is a system that negates circular weight is often preferred as a solution to a system in order to prevent deadlock from happening in a system so these are the five notable necessary conditions which if prevented the system may not enter into a state of deadlock so you need to negate mutual exclusion you need to negate hold and wait you need to negate no preemption you need to negate irreversible processes and eventually you need to negate circular weight so if you negate all of these five important aspects deadlock can be prevented now let us try to understand some of the notable strategies used for handling deadlocks. So the, fir the, uh, the four important strategies used for handling deadlocks are either you can ignore the deadlock considering it that it will not have an effect on the overall performance of the system. So you can ignore the deadlock 
or you can initiate a preventive measure so design a system in such a way that the possibility of deadlock is excluded a priori that is before the the occurrence of the deadlock in a the system then the third strategy you can do is you can avoid the deadlock and the fourth strategy that you can do is you can detect a deadlock so these are the four strategies that you can initiate in order to handle deadlocks so you can ignore deadlocks you can prevent deadlocks you can avoid deadlocks and you can detect deadlocks so ignore deadlocks so pretend there is no problem at all even if a deadlock happens it will have a minimum influence on the overall throughput of the system so in such situation you can ignore the deadlock you can prevent the deadlock design a strategy or design a system in such a way that the possibility of deadlock is excluded a priori that means prior to the occurrence of the deadlock the deadlock is prevented the third one is avoid deadlock so make decisions dynamically to check whether they uh, whether a request causes a deadlock or not right okay so we have deadlock avoidance mechanism that allows you to determine when if a resource is allocated to a process whether it leads to a deadlock at a later point in time or not so that's called as avoidance so make a decision dynamically checking whether the request will if granted potentially lead to a deadlock or not so we'll try to understand it with the help of an example and the fourth one is to detect so let the deadlock occur and then what we'll try to do is we'll try to detect it when it happens and take some action to recover after the uh, the occurrence of the deadlock so these are the four prime strategies that you can initiate for handling deadlock so you can ignore deadlocks you can prevent deadlocks you can avoid deadlocks or you can detect deadlocks now let us talk about deadlock prevention so the strategy of deadlock prevention is to design a system in such a way that possibility of deadlock is excluded a priori so that means prior to the occurrence of the deadlock in a system what we'll try to do is we'll try to de potentially detect deadlock and try to initiate necessary measures to avoid it so the strategy of deadlock prevention is to design a system in such a way that the possibility of deadlock is excluded a priori so methods for pre preventing uh, so so this is what uh, deadlock prevention is all about so methods for preventing deadlocks are, are basically of two types right first one is called as an indirect method and the second one is called as a direct method indirect method prevents the occurrence of one of the necessary conditions listed earlier right so indirect method prevents the occurrence of one of the necessary conditions listed earlier that is mutual exclusion holding weight no preemption and circular weight so indirect method prevents the occurrence of one of the necessary conditions listed ab above whereas direct method prevents the occurrence of circular weight condition ex exclusively so direct method prevents the occurrence of circular weight so indirect method prevents the occurrence of one of the necessary conditions listed above whereas direct method prevents the occurrence of circular weight in in a resource allocation graph so deadlock prevention strategies are very conservative they solve the problem of deadlock by limiting access to the resources and by imposing strict restriction on the processes so this is to be also understood that deadlock prevention strategies are very conservative conservative in the way how the resources are assigned to the processes so they solve the problem of deadlock by limiting access to the resources and by imposing strict restriction on the on the processes so this is what deadlock prevention is all about so to prevent uh, the system from deadlock any of the four conditions should be discarded as we have already learned in the previous classes so we'll be revising it again so there are four conditions mutual exclusion hold and weight no preemption and circular weight so mutual exclusion so in general we do not have a system with all the resources being shared so this so this this cannot be uh, uh, conceptually it is true but practically this uh, may not be possible because we do not have a system with all the resources being shareable so it is not possible to prevent deadlock by denying mutual exclusion because there may exist a resource that is being utilized by the process in a non-shareable mode 
which implies that if a, if a process is assigned with the resource, the process utilizes the resource until unless it does not release it. So in general, and theoretically it may be possible, per, but practically we cannot have a system with all the resources being shareable. So it is not possible to prevent deadlock by uh, denying mutual exclusion. So now what we can wait on, work on is we can wait, work on hold and wait. We can work on no preemption. We can wait on. Uh, we can we can work on circular wait. So the next condition is hold and wait. So ensure that hold and wait condition never occurs. That is, say each process must request and get all the resources before it, it's, it begins its execution. So this is very much important. So all the processes should all the processes requiring resources should have the resources pre-hand before the initiation of the execution process. So it should not hold and wait. Each process can request resource only when it does not occupy any resources. So each process can request resources only when it does not occupy any resources. The second approach is a little bit better, right? Okay, so each process can request resources only when it does not occupy any resources. So both approaches cause low resource utilization, but it may lead to starvation because it may so happen that a process requesting for a resource may have to wait for a prolonged period of time uh, for the process to be allocated to itself and for it to perform operation. So, so this is what hold and wait and how hold and wait can be potentially avoided. Then we have no preemption. So if a process that is holding some resource requests another resource and then and that resource cannot be allocated to it, then it must release all the resources that are currently allocated to it. So this is very much important. So if a process that is holding some resource requests another resource and that resource cannot be allocated to it at that point in time, then it must release all the resources that are currently allocated to it. So this is what no preemption is. Further, when a process requests for some resources if they are available allocate them to the process if a resource requested is not available then we'll check whether it's being used or it's being allocated to some other process waiting for another process if that resource is not being used then the operating system preempts it from the from the waiting process and allocates it to the requesting process so if that resource is used then the request the requesting process must wait right okay so this is what no preemption is all about so in situation when a process is waiting for a resource that is being held by some other process now we need to determine that whether the process that is uh, holding the resource is waiting for some other resource or not if it is not waiting and it's performing its operation let it hold its resource and situation if it is waiting for some other resource that is being held by some other process then the process should be preempted and the resource has to be assigned to a process that is waiting for uh, the resource in order to perform operation so that is what no no preemption is all about then eventually circular wait so impose a linear ordering of all resource types so this is very much important so impose a linear ordering of resource type then each resource can only request uh, each process can only request resource in an increasing order of priority right okay so what we need to do is we need to linearly organize all the resource type and then uh, we need to assign priority to it and then process can uh, only request resource in an increasing order of priority. For an example, set priorities for resource R1, R2, R3, R4. So R1, R2, R3, R4 are uh, uh, four resources that are assigned with priorities 1, 2, 3 and 4. So with these priorities, if process P wants to use resource R1 and R3, it should first request for resource r1 then followed by a request to r3 whenever process request for a resource rj then it must it must release all resources rk wherein the priority of rk is greater than priority of rj so this is one way how what you can do is you can avoid circular weight by imposing linear ordering of the resources where priorities are assigned with the uh, with the various resources that are there in the system and if a process P wants to use a particular resource RJ, then it must have released all the resources uh, RK with priorities of RK greater than equals to priority of RJ. So this is what is circular weight. So here what we have learned about is we have learned about four conditions, mutual exclusion, hold and wait, 
no preemption and then circular weight which we had already discussed in the previous class which can be prevented to not allow a system enter into a state of deadlock right so that's that is what uh, deadlock prevention is all about now let us try and understand what deadlock avoidance is so deadlock avoidance basically me uh, tries to make a judicious choice to ensure that the system remains free from deadlock right so deadlock avoidance uh, uh, takes into account a mechanism which makes a judicious choice to ensure that the system uh, stays free from deadlock so with deadlock right with so deadlock avoidance requires knowledge of future request for processes uh, for process re uh, um, requesting for resources uh, and from that what we try to do is we try to get a potential flu uh, of existence of deadlock and then we try to avoid certain uh, such kind of situations right so deadlock avoidance uh, deals with making judicious choice to ensure that the system remains free from deadlock wherein we do a futuristic analysis we do a forecast utilizing certain knowledge about uh, the resource requirement that may happen in the future and then we'll try to potentially determine deadlock and we'll try to avoid those paths that may potentially lead to deadlock so ways to avoid deadlock um, by careful resource allocation first one is you need to have uh, a knowledge about the resource trajectories the the way how the resources will be demanded uh, by the processes in the future in the due course of execution of a system right uh, you need to have uh, information about the safe and the unsafe states that may be potentially entered by the system whenever resource allocation is done for the process and then we have digit uh bankers algorithm uh, for deadlock avoidance so we'll learn about deadlock avoidance in detail in the subsequent classes but for now just remember that deadlock avoidance deals with mechanisms where we make uh, judicious choices to ensure that the system remains free from deadlock so here what we try to do is we try to make a futuristic analysis about the uh, the resource requirement and try to determine whether uh, there will be a potential of deadlock or not right okay so that is the way how we can avoid that dead, uh, deadlocks in a system so possible ways for avoiding deadlock are uh, building a resource trajectory uh, making a a demand list of resources uh, in at the future point in time then by identifying safe and unsafe states and by um, using a digit trust uh, bankers algorithm so so this this is uh, uh, in just about what deadlock avoidance is so in today's class what we have learned about is we have learned about um, the various uh, strategies for handling deadlock right okay wherein we have learned that there are four strategies ignore prevent avoid and detect and then we have learned about uh, the mechanisms or for preventing deadlock so we have learned about indirect and direct method and then we learned about uh, the conditions that may be prevented in order to not let the system enter into a state of deadlock which are mutual exclusion hold and wait uh, no preemption and circular weight and then we moved on to uh, deadlock avoidance and we try to understand what deadlock avoidance is in brief so in the next class, we will start with deadlock avoidance. Till then, goodbye and have a good day.